Hello and welcome to Anatomy. My name is Stephanie Benzman and I will be your professor for the semester. So what we're going to be doing each week is we're going to be going through these lectures. You are responsible for watching them. It's just like being in an actual lecture classroom. So you will need to attend and it is up to you to make sure that you're watching these videos. Um, so make sure that you guys are following along the schedule each week. It is on the syllabus in Canvas. So make sure that you guys look up that syllabus tab in the Canvas section and follow along with that schedule so you guys don't get behind. Also very important to make sure to pay attention to test deadlines. Very important as there are no makeup exams. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely important to pay attention to those deadlines. Now each week as we go through these lectures, we're going to be I'm going to be talking about them here to you in person, and then you guys are going to be following along with the PowerPoints that I've provided to you on the Canvas site. So always, always, always remember to check those deadlines, okay? Check those Canvas deadlines. Everything is under that either modules tab or the syllabus tab. It'll tell you exactly what's due, when it's due, and that the modules will have the schedule up for you. So you can kind of see week by week what you're responsible for and the material for each one of the exams. So definitely, definitely, definitely check the Canvas course. Okay, so as I go through these lectures, what we're going to be doing is we're going to, again, be looking at these PowerPoints as the same PowerPoints that you guys have on your Canvas site. I'm going to be going through them and explaining each one of the slides and kind of the information that I want you guys to know. So between the lecture notes, the lab assignments, and everything that we talk about in class and in the Canvas class um, is going to be on your exam. So make sure that you're really covering everything and always check online for study guides because I always provide those as well. So definitely make sure that you're checking those throughout the semester so you're keeping in track of what you should be learning. Okay, are you ready for our first lecture? So we're gonna be talking about anatomy all semester long, so let's define anatomy, right? So what is anatomy? Okay, so anatomy is really, it's the study of structure. So we're talking about what it is, what it looks like, what the little parts are, of each one of these, well, we're going to be covering everything from cells to bones to muscles to organ systems. We're going to be covering it all. So each one of those, again, we're really looking at the structure of things. What is it? What is it made of? Right? All of these different ideas. We're not really going to be focusing on what it is or what it does just yet. That's really a physiology thing. Now, when we get to some of the organ systems, we're going to be talking about it. When we really would get to any of them, we're going to be talking generalized what does it do? But really, what it does is going to be physiology side. So we're really focusing on what is it, right? So we're learning the names of these things and we're learning the terminology because that's going to be really helpful later on when we're talking about, say, the dorsal versus the ventral or transverse versus, you know, any of these terms, you need to know them. So let's define them. And that's what we're going to get into right now. So let's talk two different types of anatomy that we have. We have microscopic anatomy and we have gross anatomy. Now it's not gross like, ew, I mean, this is, this is kind of gross, but it's not my picture. Um, but microscopic just means small, micro, tiny, right? We're talking about small things. When you're talking about gross anatomy, you're talking about things that you can actually see with your naked eye. Okay. So microscope, you need a micro <laughs> microscopic, you need a microscope. I know blows the mind. Uh, and we're going to look at things like cells and we're going to be looking at different types of tissue and we're looking at these, these really great detailed slides. We're gonna to have to use a microscope for that. Now, a lot of the anatomy that we're gonna be looking at, like our bones, our muscles, that's all just gonna be gross anatomy. We're gonna be just looking at that with our naked eye. So very important to distinguish between the two. Naked eye, get it? I know, terrible jokes, but guess what? You're in this for the whole semester, so you're gonna to have to deal with them. I know, but it, it does make it more fun. It does make it more fun. Now, when we talk about gross anatomy, remember it's not gross, it's just what we can see with our naked eye. So one of the things that we can do with anatomy is what's called comparative anatomy. And this is comparing it across, in this case, different species. So you can see here, we've all different types of apes and monkeys and humans, right? And when we look at this comparative anatomy, what we're actually looking at is the bones in our hands. And you can see the bones in our hands here, funny enough, are actually the same bones that are gonna be found in each one of these. Now, obviously they are all different species, but because we came from the same common ancestor, we all have relatedness. So the closer we are in our structures, the more related that we are. And then you can see, we actually get to some of these uh, older world monkeys right here with a little bit different anatomy. But again, all the bones are still the same. 
So this is a really great way of looking at how related we are across different species. This is evolution, right? We're looking at the change over time. So we can see, yes, we did all come from same, same common ancestors. So we all have the same bones, but they are slightly modified depending on the species that we are. Uh, whales, same thing, whales are mammals. We have the same bones that whales do in their flippers, but because of their lifestyle and where they live, obviously they're modified into those flippers instead of the fingers. Um, but again, we can look at these similarities or the differences. We can look at, say, a bat wing and say, hey, well, we have, that's a bad example. I'd say bird wing and a bat wing, right? So you look at them and you're like, well, they're both wings, so they must be pretty similar, right? They both fly, they both live in the air, right? But they're actually not. So when we do comparative anatomy, we can look at it and say, oh, actually these are very different because we can look at the bone structures and see how different they are. So one of the great things about anatomy. Okay, so next up we're looking at developmental anatomy. Okay, so we have comparative anatomy. We're comparing similarities and differences between two different species, right? When we look at developmental anatomy, we're looking at the development basically from conception through maturity. What happens at each stage of development, right? Because we're not born like this. We had to develop. We had to grow and develop over time. And so looking at every single one of these stages from day one, all the way through, way through birth, actually through death, right? the entire maturity, right? Well, not through death, really, because you're not maturing at that point. When you stop maturing is when this stops. But you're looking at the development. Like, well, how are you developing over time? I can tell you, similar species are going to develop. Basically, the early stages are going to be similar until a certain point when they're going to diverge and become those two different species. But the longer you have that developmental, that, that early stage of development, the same, the more closely related you are. So we can actually observe this in embryology and embryology is specifically looking at everything before birth. So this embryology is great because we can look at say, we can look at human growing in our little, from our little eggs, right? Developing, you can look at a chicken, you look at them and say, hey, maybe in the beginning you have the same kind of splits and stuff, but very quickly they become very two different embryological developmental stages. Right? So as the embryo develops, if they're very different early on, the species must be different as well. And this is a lot of evolution, so we're not going to really focus too much on it, but we're highlighting some of the benefits of, of uh, anatomy. Okay, now there is also regional anatomy. Regional anatomy you can think of is very particular, right? Just one region. What are we talking about? Say the skin the bones, the muscles. And we that's basically how we're going to set up the semesters. We're going to go through regional anatomy. We're going to start with the cells and then we're going to move on to, I believe we move on to the bones and then the muscles and the organ system. So we're going to be looking at each one of these re regions individually, um, including surface anatomy, which you can only imagine is, right, the surface. Everything that is exposed to the outside environment would be considered surface anatomy. So we're going to start with that. Um, Going on to systematic anatomy, systems, right? Systematic systems. So we're looking at organ systems here, right? Your digestive system, your urinary system, your reproductive system. So then we're gonna focus on each of the individual systems that make up us. Now, starting from the very smallest to the very largest, we have atoms, right? The chemical level. What are we actually built up? Well, we're all built from elements, right? Elements combine together, make certain chemicals, right? Don't be afraid of the word chemicals, guys. Air is a chemical. Water is a chemical. <gasps> I know, we're just walking chemicals. Don't be away, afraid of the word chemical. Now, the chemical level is not technically considered alive, and we're going to get there in just a second, but we do have atoms, right? Single atoms, single elements, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, right? You put a few of those together, say like two hydrogens and an oxygen, and you get a molecule, in this case, water. Right? So we're now building from the smallest, smallest unit, atoms, we're building and building and building and getting larger and more complex. And that's what we're doing here. So when you take a bunch of those molecules and you stick them together, you can actually build a whole cell. Now this is your smallest unit of life. Because an atom and a molecule, they're not alive. Right? Oxygen's not alive. But your cells are. And so are single-celled organisms. So the smallest unit of life is the cell. So we have a bunch of molecules, we put them together, and we make a cell right? Those cells function. If we were to take a bunch of similar cells and stick them together, now we have tissue, right? Say I put all of my muscle tissues together or all of my muscle cells together. Now I have muscle, right? I actually have the, the tissue that is muscle. 
Um, and that, that's the tissue level that you can see right here. So again, we're getting larger and more complex. Say we were to take um, every muscle that we have or every organ that we have that works together, we would then, so, sorry, I can't say that. I'm skipping one. Every cell that we have works together to form an organ, right? All of our muscle cells together form our muscles, right? All of these tissues in here that form, say, your organ, you say your stomach, right? That tissue layer in its entirety, not just part of it, but its entirety would be the organ level, okay? After the organ level, say you put all of your organs that work together together, okay? So say you're talking about, in this case, your digestive system. So your stomach, your gallbladder, your intestines, both your small and your large, you put all of those different organs together. Now they form an organ system. In this case, your digestive system. Okay, so that's that systematic level, that system. Okay, and if you were to take every single organ system in our body, our, our reproductive system, our digestive system, our respiratory system, our everything system, and then you would get our organism. In this case, humans. Okay, that would be the final level, the largest level. So again, we have atoms. Atoms stick together to make up a bunch of molecules. Molecules can create cells. Once you have a full cell, you put a bunch of similar cells together, you get a tissue. You take that entire tissue level together as a functioning unit, you get your organ. You put all of your functioning units together, all of your organ systems together, you get your organism. Good? So just to recap this in just a little different way, right? The simplest level of organization is that cellular level, right? That chemical, sorry. I said cellular, chemical level. The simplest level of life is the cellular level. Okay, so make sure that you make that distinction. Okay, so moving to our cellular level, you guys should be fairly familiar with this, right? This is our animal cell right here. You can tell because it's big and round and squishy squishy and does not have a cell wall. That would be a plant cell. Um, they do have this plasma membrane. Cytoplasm is just the liquidy goo stuff that everything's kind of swimming in in here. And all of these are the different organelles, like the mitochondria, the smooth and the rough ER, um, your nucleus, all of that good stuff that makes up your cell, your cells. Now, continuing on the cellular level of organization, remember we're grouping similar cells together to create a tissue. So there's lots of different types of cells that are going to have different functions. Here's just a couple of them that we're going to be covering throughout this semester. First, we have the osteocytes. Cytes typically always means cell. So osteo means bone and, and site means cell. So you're talking bone cells. All right, once you break it down, it really does not seem that hard. You've got your muscle cells. You can always tell your muscle cells, long striated muscles, not really nucleated, meaning having nucleuses. Um, lots of different types of cells in your skin. You've got your outer layer, which is going to be your epithelial. You've got your under layers, which are going to be composed of so many other things that we're going to get to. Don't worry. You're going to be so excited about it. We've got red and white blood cells, right? The little red ones are going to be the red blood cells. And these big old guys right here with those stained nucleuses, those are going to be the white blood cells. And then you've got your neurons, right? Those things firing off in your brains as we speak right now, because you're learning and therefore they're actually, they're firing off all the time. But you're learning, so they're firing off extra right now. Now, once we move past the cellular level, we do have that tissue level, right? All of the similar cells working together to form that tissue. That tissue being, say, connective tissue, like blood. And blood is a tissue, right? Um, muscle or skin cells right here making skin is a tissue. It's actually the largest organ in your body. It's not even in your body, but of your body. Muscle cells, all of these different great types of cells that we, we have all function together. When they function together, they function as a tissue layer. That whole layer functioning as a whole to complete a task brings us to the next level, which is the organ level, right? You have an actual functioning organ that has a purpose, right? Your, your stomach is an organ, digest food. Um, your gallbladder, right, secretes bile. Your liver produces the bile. All of these things are functions of your organs. So these are designed for specific purposes. Uh, yeah. Now, if we were to put together, say the heart and the, let's say your heart and your lungs and all your veins and your arteries and your blood, right? We put all of that together. That would become an organ system. That would be your circulatory system, your respiratory system, right? So all of these would be organ systems. And we have a couple of different here and we're actually going to go over all of them, which is going to be fun. 
digestive system, muscular system, integumentary system, lymphatic system, endocrine system, nervous system, skeletal, male and female reproductive systems, respiratory systems, urinary systems, circulatory systems, all right? Every one of these are an organ system. If we were to put all of these together, that's when you get your organism, right? Functioning as a whole. How do we function completely from start to finish with all these systems? Based on all those tissues, based on all those cells, based on the molecules and atoms that they were made up of. I know. It just builds up on itself. Okay. I told you that we're going to talk some terminology here. This is really important because there's a lot of terminology that you're going to see in anatomy that we don't necessarily see other places, or at least you probably haven't seen yet. So we're going to define some of these terms so that later on, and you do have to remember these because later on in the lab, especially I'll tell you, you know, make a transverse section right here. And you're going to be like, I don't know what that means. And well, you're going to learn about it right here. Okay. So when we're describing things in anatomy, it's very visual. So we have to talk about us. And unfortunately, we can't just explode us out and be like, I'm talking about this little part. So you have to kind of describe where things are, right? Where my left arm is in relation to my right arm, where my heart is in relation to my chest, where my eyes are in relation to my nose. Like, lit, lit. you can't just say above. What do you mean above, right? Technically, yes, my eyes are above my nose. Okay, but how is that in relation to, to my arm? You're like uh, above and to the left. Who's left? My left? Your left? Who's left? Right? So we have to standardize these things. So when we start to talk about them, you guys will know, oh, okay, so it's this side and it means on this other side of the right section. Perfect. Got it. So we do need what's called as a standard universal position. And that's so we know everybody starts out in that position. So it's easier to describe. Because again, my left, your left, which we don't know. So this is what's known as the anatomical position. Essentially, you're facing forward, you have both of your hands down by your side and palms facing out. This is like the standard position. Now, some of you are probably already looking at this picture and be like, oh, boobies, I know she's naked. It's anatomy, guys. We're gonna be saying things like breast, testicles, ovaries, vagina. I know, and you guys can giggle all you want at home. Because the best part about these lectures, you can pause me. You want to pause and giggle all you want? Great, do it. I encourage it. But we are going to be talking about these things, and so I'm just going to breeze through them. So if I don't giggle, it's because, you know, I'm trying to teach you guys. Now, anatomical position again, standing up, feet parallel on the floor, meaning facing forward. Head to eye level, moving forward, not tilted up, not down, not left, not right. Straight, standard. Again, hands down by the side, palms facing outwards. Um, and that's pretty much it. So anytime we're typically talking about anatomy, we're talking always in the standard anatomical position. Now there are other positions that we're going to talk about, but we're going to get there. Now we do typically divide these, let's just say we divide our bodies into two main sections, two main sections. There's a lot of little sections that we're going to get into, but two main sections. One, we have the axial skeletal system or the axial system. And that includes the head, the trunk, the, the head, the neck, and the trunk, which is basically your spinal cord. So imagine everything that you absolutely need to survive, your brain, right, your spinal cord. Well, actually, it doesn't even count because you do need all of your organs to survive. So uh, just think axial, think like the axis, right, the center, your head and your spine. And we're going to see a picture of this in just a second. Now, the appendicular is appendages right? That's everything else, everything coming off of your body. That's going to be the appendicular, right? Appendages. Uh, now, we do have some very specific uh, regions to talk about, things like carpals, right? Carpals, wrists, uh, the oral or the mouth, and femoral or thigh, and that's because that's where your femoral vein is, or femoral. Femoral, femoral, I've heard, I've heard them both ways. You can kind of call them whatever you want, as long as you can spell it right. All right, so let's look at this. So we've got, again, this is going to be, well, we're now going into other sections. <gasps> There's so many sections, guys. There's so many things you need to learn. We're going to see the, ap um, the axial and appendicular um, skeletal systems. We divide all that when we get to bones and stuff. We also need to divide the sections of the body into the thorax, the abdomen, and the back or the dorsium. I know, guys, stick with me here. It's a lot to know. Do you absolutely have to know every single thing on here? Not today, you don't. We are gonna cover it later on in the semester, but today, again, we're just learning these terms. We're learning about certain concepts, and then we're really gonna dive into them later on in the semester. So remember, guys, this is still just day one. Don't freak out yet. All right, so we have things like 
the cephalic region right here, which is basically the face. We've got the cervical right here. You've got the thoracic, the abdomen, um, your pubic area right here. This is going to be your you know, lower limbs, your pedals, which are your feet. All these regions we're going to define in good time. So guys, don't stress on this yet. These are just different regions of the body so that we can, when we're talking about it, we can go straight to, oh, the lumbar region. Oh, I know what the lumbar region is. It's this lower back area right here, right? That's why you guys get lumbar support, lower back. Now, before we go into actually naming any of these, let's talk about, let's talk about how to describe them. Okay, so there's a couple different ways that we can do this to think about this in a 3D way. So first of all, it's known as a section. So if we're looking at a section of something, we're, imagine literally taking a section of it, like a, like a slice of bread. So you have a whole loaf of bread. Imagine pulling a single slice of bread out of that and you're looking at it. So one, you're gonna look at the outside, which is gonna have the crust, and on the inside is gonna be all that bread, right? So that's imagine if you take a section of us, the outside would be skin and the inside would be bones and organs and stuff like that. Now that's actually physically removing a section. The same type of way can, the same type of um, orientation can be thought of when you talk about a plane. Now a plane is a large, flat, imaginary surface that either goes in one direction, like this way, this way, this way, but it kind of goes on forever. And so you can separate things based on the planes. You're not typically taking a section out. So it would be more of, you have that loaf of bread and you cut it down the center with like a huge wall. That would be a plane, right? You've, you've divided that bread with that plane or that huge wall. Right? You're not removing a section, you're just separating. Now, when you talk about planes, you have to say, well, am I cutting it down the middle? Am I cutting it sideways and diagonally? Am I cutting it just the front? How are you cutting it? So to make that plane. So there are a, but three main types of planes that we're pretty much gonna talk about. The first is known as the coronal plane. So the coronal plane, think, corona essentially means crown. So corona beers actually have a little crown on them. That's because it means crown. So when you think of a coronal plane, think of your cutting straight through the crown. Really what you're doing is you're cutting through their face. And that's what we can see right here. So we have this little skull diagram and you can see that the plane separates the front of his face from the back of his face, right? So the eyes and the nose and the mouth are forward and everything else, the back of his skull and his brain are in the back, okay? That's a coronal plane, sectioned directly through the front and the back. When you talk about a transverse plane, essentially now you're cutting through the middle. That would be that first cutting, um, that first plane of, through the loaf of bread that I was talking about, that would be a transverse plane. You're cutting directly through the half. So now you have a top half and a bottom half, right? Not a front half and a back half, like the coronal, you have a top half and a bottom half. That would be transverse, transversal. Now, mid-sagittal plane, mid meaning middle, and sagittal is basically, you're gonna mean sides. Okay, so mid-sagittal would be directly down the center. And this is if you guys learned about symmetry, remember things like bilateral symmetry? Bilateral symmetry is us, right? Imagine that's exactly a mid-sagittal plane. You can divide us straight down the middle this way and I get a right side and a left side and they mirror images of each other. That would be a mid-sagittal plane. Um, sagittal plane would just be one of those planes slightly to the right or slightly to the left of that mid-sagittal. Mid-sagittal meaning middle. Sagittal would just be like this way or this way, right? You still have halves, but they're not cut in evenly in the middle. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And if not, Remember, any questions you guys have, you can shoot me emails. You can come visit me in my office hours, either in person or on Zoom. And uh, you can also see me in class if we have labs in class. Again, just depends on the semester. But always email me if you guys have uh, questions. Okay. Now, planes aren't necessarily going directly through something like us that has, you know, two sides. I have a left side and I have a right side and you can cut me right down the middle. But that's not always how that works because some of our organs are kind of funky shaped like our intestines, they go for, you know, 18 feet in our body or however long it is, which we're gonna learn about yet. Um, so when you're talking about these planes, we can actually cut a plane here or here or here and then here and then here. And if you look at all of the way that these guys have been planes, they're all different. Everyone is shaped different. So it's really important to pay attention when you're looking at these planes, because these are gonna be like a 2D 
2D image of basically what's going on 3D wise. So you kind of have to figure out where are you? Were you up here? And then you're looking at the outside and the big open inside. Because what's this guy? How would you know that that's the loop around? If you looked at it like this, it might look like two separate organs or two separate systems going in two separate directions. So it's always very important to pay attention to your, basically to your position. Where are you? Spatial awareness. All right. So now say you want to describe something to me. You're like, I saw this and I don't know what it is and I'm going to tell me all about it, right? You need to tell me where it is located, right? Before we even start talking about what it is, where is it located? Where in the body did you find it? And of course, it's not exactly how we're going to spend the semester, but you can imagine. So if we're talking about anterior, anterior means for, forward or front. Which way are they going, right? So imagine that you have this wily e. Coyote right here. And he's standing right now, but imagine he's walking on all fours. As he's walking forward towards his head direction, right, that would be the anterior. So his head would be anterior to the rest of his body, forward, front, right? We're going to get to posterior in just a second, but you can imagine what that is. That's the back, anterior, posterior, front, and back. Now, we also have things like the belly side. So imagine he's walking along and he's walking forward, and we know he's, that's his anterior, well, his belly underneath his legs as he walked would be his ventral side, right? Belly side, ventral side. Different from your back, which would be your dorsal side. So we have anterior front, we have ventral belly, we have posterior back. Also back or end. I always like to think of it as end because back can also be dorsal. So back, posterior kind of means backwards or the end of something or right whereas dorsal you can think of like a dorsal fin on like a shark or a dolphin right that kind of means back to me so even though it does definitely the definition is booty side right back side back here so his tail would be on his dorsal side but it's also kind of posterior right it's not near his anterior end it's near his posterior end so unfortunately guys and there's nothing i can do about this a lot of this terminology kind of sort of overlaps, especially when you're talking about animals. A little bit easier for us because we walk just upright. And so there's anterior head, posterior, back, dorsal, backside. Um, but it's a little bit different in animals. So you might hear me kind of use them interchangeably, but we're focusing on humans again. <laughs> I'm mostly marine biology, but I also can teach you guys anatomy. So if I slip into saying more dorsal instead of posterior, that's only because I'm used to working with animals instead of people. Like this guy, a little great white shark right here, which you can see his backside. And this is also his dorsal. So even though it's on his back, they consider it more towards the booty. I know. Don't worry, guys. It's really not going to be that complicated because I'm going to help you guys to find these things as we go. So I'm going to make it very clear what they are. All right. Superior. Superior means above. So remember how I was talking about how my eyes are above my nose? Above how, though? internally above because isn't technically them my eyes superior in front of my brain which is on the inside so we do have to define what are you talking about exactly where so superior typically means above or really closer to the head so in this case what we're looking at is we're looking at his yellow eyes up here are superior meaning closer to the head than his tail right superior to his tail above closer to the head Inferior would be below. So in this case, his tail would be inferior to his head or his ears or his eyes, right? Superior, it would be inferior to all of those things. His feet would be inferior to his tail, right? His eyes would be superior to his feet, right? So there's a lot of different ways that you can define these and you can use these examples. So make sure that you guys do practice this and we'll do, we'll practice it the first day of lab too. So don't worry. Okay, so moving on to cranial. Cranial, like your cranium, right, means your head. means your head. So it's at the head's end. So you can think of this as your cranial, right, on the top, at the head's end. So the coyote's ears would be cranial to his shoulders because coyote's ears stick way up here to his shoulders, which would be way down here. This is not the end of the head. This would be the end of the head. Now, caudal would be like a caudal fin of a fish or a shark. That would be the tail. Well, really, that would be the end of the body if you're talking about a fish. But the coyote, right, his caudal would be closer to his tail, closer to his legs, all that. So 
In this case, the coyote's tail, way down here, would be caudal to his ears, right? So it would be on one end, where his ears would be another. And again, imagine he's walking on all fours, not standing. It's a little bit more confusing that way. But as he's walking on all fours, ears are way up here, right? Tail's way back there. So front end, back end. So yeah, cranial and caudal we don't typically use with humans because again, we're always standing up and we don't really have a caudal or a tail or anything like that. So it wouldn't really be so used on us, but we definitely use it on animals. Okay. If we're talking about medial, medial means middle. So anything medial means in the middle. So in this case, his little tuft of fur right here would be medial to his shoulders, right? My necklace would be, which is not an anatomy, but you know, you get the drift. My necklace would be medial to my shoulders. Right? It's in the middle of this, right, of the whole body. Uh, lateral means sides, okay? So my shoulders would be lateral to my necklace, right? My ears would be lateral to my nose. My nose would be medial to my ears, okay? So again, we can use lots of different examples of this. So make sure you guys can practice. Now, here's one, some that you probably haven't heard before. Ipsilateral means lateral, meaning, okay, on the sides, but ipsilateral means same side. Okay, so my right ear and my right hand are ipsilateral to each other, same side of the body. My right ear and my left arm would be contralateral or different sides, contra, like contradicting, different, right? Contralateral, lateral meaning sides, contra meaning different, different sides. So my right ear and my left arm would be contralateral to each other, but my left ear and my left arm would be ipsilateral to each other because it's the same side. Okay. Proximal, you can think of like proximity, like a close proximity, means how close you are, right? You're closer to the point of attachment. You're pretty there. You're, you're in the proximity is what they say. Like you're so close. Whereas like distal kind of sounds like distance. We're much farther away. So in this case, the coyote's knee would be proximal to his foot, right? Knee's right here, foot's right here. Look how close that is. But the coyote's fist would be distal to the elbow. And remember, you have to think about this as distance from the connection point. When we're talking about the connection point, we're talking about your center. Okay, so my wrist way out here, right, is farther from the connection point than my elbow. Okay, so we'd have to go wrist, elbow, shoulder. But because the wrist is so much farther away, that would be considered distal. The elbow would be considered proximal because it's much closer. So the elbow would be proximal to the shoulder compared to the wrist. The wrist would be distal, farther away from the connection point. The connection point would be the center connection point, not to each other. Because that's how you can think of the knee to the hip versus the foot to the hip, okay? So the knee is proximal, closer to the hip than the foot. The foot would be farther away. I know, and you kind of have to think of compared to the foot. Because you think, well, they're both kind of the same. They're like one joint away, but really it's, it's compared to. Okay. Now, like I said, when we're talking about above, my eyes are technically, if I'm laying on my back, my eyes are above my head or my brain. But really what they are is they would be superficial to my brain because my eyes are on the outside, my brain's on the inside. So my eyes would be superficial to my brain or realistically, you can think of something easier. My skin would be superficial to my skeleton, All right? It's on the outside. It's on the outside, the most outer layer kind of thing. Whereas my um, heart, in this case, would be deep to my ribs because my heart is way inside, right? Protected by the ribs. It's the whole point of the ribs, right? Just to protect your lungs and your heart. So that would be deep. So in this case, say my skin would be superficial to my heart, which is true, way on the outside. But we really wouldn't say, yeah, no, we could, we could still go with that. And then the heart would be deep to, well, the skin, we could do deep as well, right? The heart would be deep to the skin or deep to the ribs. Either one, it's technically deep to both. Okay. All right, so one of the last things we're gonna talk about today is body cavities. So we've talked about directions, we've talked about what's going on, cranial, axial, caudal, all this good stuff. But now we're gonna talk a little bit about the specific cavities. And this is where we do get into the details, but we break them down for you, so don't worry. Now, when you're talking about the cranial cavity, cranial again means head, you're talking about this region right here, right? That would be different than the vertebral cavity, which is gonna be your vertebrae, right? Everything in the back. So we're breaking up different cavities. 
Um, in fact, I'll just show you right here. Oh, we also have our posterior. They're divided from our posterior, posterior versus our ventral or belly, right? Posterior, ventral. Okay. Posterior, we've got that cranial cavity right here. You've got that dorsal body cavity right here. Imagine we we're walking on all fours. This would be our dorsal, right? We've got our thoracic cavity right here, which would be the heart and the lungs. This is going to be your abdominal cavity, right? Remember, these are all ventral, right? We're walking on our, but this is all belly side. Even though that's thora thoracic, that's your chest, it's still considered ventral because you have your dorsal and you have your ventral, or really you have your posterior and you have your anterior, anterior. Um, these are two different views. We are looking at the lateral view, the side view, and we're looking at the anterior view, the frontal view, right? So this would be more an anatomical uh, position. All right, so looking at each one of those, right, div divided into our dorsal cavity versus our ventral cavity, dorsals here in yellow, just the cranial and the vertebral, and then we have the thoracic cavity, which has the, um, which is all your ventral side. Again, this is going to be all your frontal side, pretty much where all your organs are. So you've got your support system back here, your nervous system, your lymphatic system, and then you've got all your organ systems right here in the front. All your other organ systems in your front, I should say. Including things like your digestive viscera, which basically just means everything for your digestive system. Um, your pelvic cavity right here, your urinary system. This is known as your abdominal pelvic cavity because it contains your abdomen and your pelvic cavity. So a lot of times in anatomy, we're gonna combine certain words and it's because we're talking about both of these regions. So instead of coming up with a third word, we just combine the two words. So abdomino pelvic, abdomen pelvic region. So we're talking about those two regions together. And then when you're talking about your ventral body cavity, remember that's all three of them. That would be your um, thoracic, your abdomen, and your pelvic. Um, I think we covered everything. Ah, so more regions, guys. So many more regions. Um, we do have these nine regions. You will have to know them. We probably won't talk too much about them throughout the semester, but you do need to know them, unfortunately. Um, so we do have two transverse and two parasagittal. Remember, two transverse and two parasagittal, right? Not mid-sagittal because that's not right in the center. Slightly off to the left and sli slightly off to the right and slightly off to the left. Sorry, I'm doing this backwards, but looking at the image, but I'm doing this backwards. It's great. Um, so if you, if you hear me get my lefts and rights wrong, that's probably why, because I'm looking at myself while doing this, while trying to look at this one, it's all backwards. So, all right. So we have our right hypochondriac region, our epigastric, epi means on top, gastric, you can think of like your digestive system, um, your left hypochondriac region, your left and right lumbar regions, remember those sides right here. You've got your umbilical region, it's not stalking, this is where your umbilical cord comes out. Your right iliac and your left iliac. You also, next to your femoral, you do have iliacs, um, veins and arteries. This is really just kind of like in the hip region, and that's why it's going to be right here. And then you've got your hypogastric region, your lower gastric region. Hypo means lower. Okay. Here are the, sometimes divided into four quadrants instead of nine quadrants. We, again, really guys aren't going to be doing this too much. I'm never going to say, you know, go to your this cab or this quadrant go to quadrant four or go to your lower left quadrant read we're probably not going to do that we're really going to be very specific about where you guys are going to be looking but unfortunately i do need you guys to know this so at least know the names of them on the last slide um and then maybe some of the major organs that go in each one of them and there's really not i mean for this one there's the liver and the gallbladder this is basically just your stomach right here um that's like nothing else there um and that's pretty much it so we're going to learn about all these organs so i probably wouldn't honestly don't even worry about it if you guys want to get ahead absolutely start le learning each of these quadrants because then later on it's going to be so easier as we go through because you're going to be like oh right that's the lower lumbar region or the um which <laughs> that's the left lumbar region i should say and that contains things like the uh spleen you know your uh what the appendix all that guess i can't even think of things right now um, but these are all going to be things that are going to come up later. So as long as you know where they are, you guys are going to be great. That's all I got for you for the first one. Remember, these are going to be, there's going to be probably anywhere from one to four lectures a week, probably realistically on average about two. So make sure that you guys are doing them. Remember, just like if we had lab or sorry, lecture in person in, in class, 
we would have at least two lectures a week. So make sure that you guys are looking at that. Now do pay attention to the syllabus, pay attention to due dates um, and the schedule. So it will really, really, really help you out and, and you'll kind of have to keep yourself on track because I won't be checking if you're watching these videos, it's kind of up to you guys. So make sure you guys watch them. Make sure as what I would do is I would pull up my computer and have the PowerPoint up as I'm watching the videos. That way you can see the slides better because you can't see them too too good here and I'm stuck at home recording these videos. So apologies for that one, but guys, we're gonna have a great semester. You're gonna have so much fun and you're gonna learn a ton. With that said, guys, anatomy is not easy. You have to put the time in. You have to have to put the time in. Watching these videos is a great start. Just looking at the PowerPoints is probably not gonna be enough. You have to watch the videos, go over the PowerPoints, go over them again. Pause me. Rewind me. If I talk too fast, you guys have the benefit that my in-person classes don't have. Stop me. Pause me. Rewind me. If I'm just too much and you're like, I just need a minute, great. Take a break. Come back. Learn what you have to do. But you guys really have to put in the time and the effort because this is not an easy subject and there is a ton of information. So we're just scratching the surface. But I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I can't wait to have such an amazing semester with you guys. So just keep looking on Canvas um, and on the YouTube page for these videos. If you guys have any problems, go ahead and email me. Don't forget to email me. Check your syllabus for my email. Email me directly, not through Canvas. I'll always get it much faster if you guys email me directly. So check the syllabus for my email. And guys, I will see you for the next lecture. Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day.